There are, there are the clear ones that people over the years have just kind of figured on their own. Growling, snarling, showing their teeth. Their posture becomes very rigid, uh, so instead of like a smooth gait, they start to stiffen their legs up. Their tail position is another indicator, so generally the higher it starts to set up, the more excited they are. Um, the way they hold their head, you know, uh, up and more confident is an indicator. But it, it's not just one thing, it's a combination of the things, you know. Uh, so you really, if you have like a loose dog scenario, the, the first rule right out of the gate is just to let the dog be. W one of the mistakes that a lot of people make is that they feel the need to go and kind of make themselves friendly to the dog. The dog will make the decision when that happens. So, and the handler uh, should be there, but if it's a case of a loose dog, but if the dog is off doing its own thing, you just kind of continue on, but there's no reason to kind of push yourself on the dog. There are other indicators that are more subtle. So for example, like, like this isn't a case of aggression, but if you notice his ears and head and went straight up and, and like his ears are kind of like rifle sights, they immediately looked in one direction and his body posture changed, his breathing changed. That's, that's all indications he's interested in something. So when you're, when, when you're walking down the street, even if someone has a dog, like those are all indicators that the dog may not be totally relaxed. And, and the handler, and even you, if the handler doesn't pick up on that, you can say, hey, you know what, maybe I'll hold off going near the dog.